Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. Today's problem is another request from one of our friends. Uh, this one was for number of provinces 547. Uh, if you have any other requests, you can you can email me. My contact's down below, babybear4812 at gmail.com. So feel free to drop those and I'll, I'll keep uh, pumping out the content that you guys want to see. Uh, with that said, I, I went with this one because I thought it was a, a good question. Uh, B, it's, uh, it's been popular with, with Amazon and Goldman Sachs. And on top of that, quite frankly, I feel like a few of the recent videos have been have been quite difficult problems, and and this one I think is is a bit easier. So I figured maybe we'll take the foot off the gas pedal just a bit for this for this one video. So the the problem says that there are n cities in total, and then some of them are connected, while others aren't. Uh, a can be connected to to city B directly, and if B is connected to C directly, then A and C are indirectly connected. And, and we're told that a group of either directly or indirectly connected cities is called a province. And so what we need to do is we need to return the total number of provinces. Now, the, the input that we're given is an N by N matrix called is connected. Uh, and then it'll be a binary matrix. Uh, it'll just give us either a one or a zero, telling us whether or not two cities are directly connected or not. One implying that they are connected, zero that they're not. If we look at something like this, uh, you know, this, this first bracket represents, let's say, city zero. Uh, city zero is connected to itself, or here they, they called it one. So, you know, it's city one's connected to itself, it's connected to city two, and it's not connected to city three. And so vice versa, that relationship holds for city two, and then city three is kind of on its own here. Um, and, and we can see that represented here in the graph. Uh, in this one here, they're they're kind of inter, they're not interconnected in, in any way, and so each of them is, is their own province. Um, and that's about it. So I, I think the problem is pretty understandable. And, and what I'd like to do is I, I, I grabbed the, an example here that I, I wanted to walk through together and we can kind of build out and, and see how we're going to tackle. And so this one is, it's a bit large. I, I wanted to have something that was a, just a touch more elaborate than the, than the previous examples were. But as you can see here, we're, we're, we're given this input matrix and I've, I've already gone ahead and drawn the graph. So just to save a bit of time, uh, we can see here that again, city zero is connected to itself and to city one. And we can see that across the diagonal, every city will be connected to itself. Okay. Um, and, and, and so on and so forth. So even just by the nature of the, of how, how these, you know, these, these drawings are laid out, these graphs, I mean, it, it pretty directly gives us an indication that this is a graph problem. And so what we can do is we can try to take a step away from the context for a moment, the context being cities and provinces, and really try to understand what it's asking on a maybe on a graphical perspective. And, and if we really take a look at it, all we need to find is how many different components there are, how many connected components there are to this graph. And once we figure that out, that's really all that we're returning. So if you walk through this matrix, you can you can really treat this like an adjacency matrix. So similar to how we can represent graphs using adjacency lists, we can also represent them using adjacency matrices like the one that's given here. Um, hypothetically, if you'd like, you could go ahead and, and turn this adjacency matrix into an adjacency list and work from there. But I didn't find it necessary to do for this problem in particular. What we see here is is again, so I, I kind of walk through and, and we see that these two are only connected to each other. Uh, five down here exists on its own and then two, three, and four uh, are connected in some way. That way being that city two is connected to both three and four, um, whereas three and four are, are only connected to two. Notice here that the direction doesn't matter. We don't care you know, which way these roads are, are running as long as they're connected, that'll form one province. So the question then becomes, how do I actually walk through and figure out how many different components or how many almost, I guess, disjointed um, components that are interconnected within themselves? So I have this, this one province, the second one over here, and, and this third one. Similar to looking through any graph, it, you know, we're, we're, gonna be need to, uh, we're going to need to do some sort of traversal. And in this problem, you can, you can really take your pick. You can either do a depth first or breadth first traversal. But I, I like to do depth first whenever I can. I find it a bit more, bit more intuitive, personally. And so what we can think about is doing the following, is we can say, let me take a walk through every single city one by one. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that if I haven't seen the city already, if I haven't been there, then surely this is, in some capacity, it's going to constitute a, a new province. So maybe let's take it from the top with the example and we'll see how it builds in. Let's say that I, I jump in here and I say, let me take a look at this first city here. 
um, this city is going to be zero and I'm going to say, okay, this is the beginning of a new province. And, and what I'll do with this province is I'll say, you know, I can treat this almost like a capital city, if you will. I'll, I'll start at this capital city. And then from here, let me see how far I can branch out across and, you know, getting to all the other cities. So if I jump in at zero and, and I'll, I'll do a depth first search at zero and I'll look through all the neighbors to see who else we're connected to. What I can do is keep a, keep some sort of track of the cities we visited. So maybe I'll, I'll add to that a lot of zero because we've been there. We then notice that it has a neighbor at one. So we're going to jump in and we're going to go to one. Once I'm done at, at one, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to look at one. I'm going to say, okay, I've seen this, I've seen this, uh, this city here. Uh, we're going to walk through and see if there are any other neighbors of one that we haven't seen yet. No, there aren't. We're going to exit this step for a search and, you know, we're, we're going to complete and realize that zero has no other neighbors. So that once we now back out, after I made my initial depth for a search call, I'm actually now just going to really say, okay, I've, I found my one province and then I kind of ticked a, a plus one on my on my total province count. And, you know, by virtue of, of that being the case, we've we've accounted for it already. I'm, I'm going to back out of this call and, and say I'm, I'm done. So I've, I, I had one province here that I found. Depth first search is over. I'm now going to step out and I'm, I'm going to keep looping. The idea is I'm going to take one for loop that's going to loop through each city one at a time, calling a depth first search on it if we haven't seen it yet. Okay. So for instance, I, I get to I get to city number, so I finished with city zero, I get a city one. I say, okay, wait, I've already visited city one, so I'm not actually going to be jumping into that. I visit city two and I say, or rather, I, I, I loop into city two and I say, have I visited yet? No, I haven't. So let me do a depth first search into city two. I jump into city two and I'm going to add it to my visited list. From city two, I'm gonna walk through every single neighbor and see which ones are connected. I notice that three is connected, so I'm gonna visit three. From three, I'm now in my depth first search, I'm going to check for all of its neighbors, which I haven't seen yet. There are none, the only neighbor it has is two, which I've already seen, so I finish with that call, and I'm back looping through city number two again. I already visited three, I noticed that it's also connected to city four. So we're gonna visit city number four. Same thing, we're gonna visit four to find any of its neighbors, it doesn't have any more. We're, we're gonna pop out of that, we, we walk through the rest of city two, and, and we're done, okay? We've checked all of its possible neighbors, and since we, we started at City 2, this was a new unvisited city. Again, you can almost think of it like a capital city and say, I'm going to mark down that, that this was this is kind of the start of a new province. So I'm gonna start a loop. I'm gonna say, if I haven't visited the starting city, I'll add one province and then to my total count, and then I'm going to do a depth for a search to, to look for all of its, all of its neighbors. We continue down, these have already been visited, and by the time we get to five, we'll, we'll add one province, we see that it's on its own, and, and that's really it. So all we're going to be doing is a depth first search through one city at a time, and we're only going to be making that call if we haven't seen the city yet. Kind of that initial call from, a, from our, our kind of four loop that you, you see that we're gonna set up. If we haven't visited yet, we're gonna tack up a, a plus one to add to the count of total provinces, do our search and, and keep digging through to find all the roads in this province or all the cities, and then jump on out. So theoretically, like I said, I don't think this is too heavy. It's a, it's a pretty standard DFS problem. Um, let's jump into the code. It's going to be super short. And, and I think if there are any misconceptions, I, I hope they'll be clarified in, in the code. If not, view this video back, drop a comment down below, and I'm, I'm happy to, to clarify any confusion. So what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to have, like I said, I'm, I'm going to define some, some DFS function, and we're going to need to have a starting point. For it. And, and I'll, I'll kind of leave this just as a placeholder for now because we're, we're going to be dealing with it in a second. But really what, we're, what we want to keep track of is, is ultimately is the number of provinces. And I'll make sure I spelt that right. I'm going to set that to zero by default from the start. And I'm going to return number of provinces at the end after we do a bit of magic here. I said that I wanted to keep track of the cities that I visited as well. Um, in order to do this kind of in an easy way, we could always use a set. Uh, I like to use sets when I can't attract this uh, really any problem that's got this visited component to it because we do have uh, that nice O of one constant time lookup for, for items that are in the set. And then what I want to do is I want to loop through every city. So I, I want to loop through each one of these. So city zero, one, two, three, four, five. This is an N by N matrix. So we will, um, it's always going to be a square matrix. So what I can do is I can say, you know, I can say for I in range and the length of is connected um, but instead of I, I'm going to use a slightly uh, more descriptive 
slightly, very slightly, more descriptive word like start as in our, our starting city. Um, technically, this is just going to be a number from 0 to n minus 1 inclusive, but that's also how I've chosen just to label the actual cities. I think that it just, it's, it's a lot, it's pretty intuitive to keep track of them that way. And then we're going to say if we haven't visited it yet, so if start is not invisited, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is the start of a new province. And, and my number of provinces is going to increase by 1. Uh, and, and once I, I recognize that, I'm going to say let me do a DFS call that's going to start at this, at this first city. Now, once I jump into this, um, into this, into this DFS, I'll say now that I've actually jumped into the call, here's where I'm going to add it to the the visited list, uh, the city that I'm starting from. The reason that I'm putting it up here and not here in the in the for loop is because when I do DFS calls and, and go further down the call stack, I want to make sure that I'm adding all of those in as well, and I'm I'm not just adding the, the starting city in here. Um, and from here, um, I'm going to use another slightly descriptive variable called end. And then what I'm going to say is for end in the range of, um, of is connected as well of the length. And so what I want to do is when I'm jumping in to say this row over here, I want to actually look at every single one of its neighbors through and through. And, and that's going to represent a sister city or, or really a city that's connected, not a sister city. Um, what I'm going to say is if they are connected, I then want to jump into DFS. So under a certain condition, I'm going to want to say, let's do a DFS on the second city. You know, I could have called this neighbor maybe. For some reason, start and end just worked in my mind. Uh, so the way we can say that is we can say if in the in the adjacency matrix is connected, start and end. Meaning the, the neighbor we're looking at, if it's actually connected directly, um, and if we haven't seen it yet. So and if uh, end is not in visited, and, and not invisited, then we will do a DFS on this call. And so we'll, this neighbor, we're going to dive into and start searching. Once we make the call, we'll add it to visited, visit all of its neighbors, etc., etc. And I'm going to run this because I that's really all that we have. Like I said, the code is super short, and I, I think this definitely wasn't the hardest problem that we've that we've had to do. The runtime is good, memory usage is good. The overall complexity, the time complexity, would be n squared because in a worst case, or I think even in all cases, we're going to have to run through every single element. So if n is the size of the dimension of one of the sides, then n squared, we have n by n elements in there. Um, the, the total size of the call stack could at most be O of n. So if every city was connected, I could go n levels down. Um, and that's the space that we're taking up. We're also taking up n space with visited because we're going to add up, end up adding every element into visited by the end. So, uh, pretty simple DFS problem. Like I said, I, I hope this was kind of a, a bit of a change of pattern so we're not going through the hardest problems. The next two I think that'll be coming out will be, will be real head scratchers. So watch out for those. I'll try to have them out this week. They're, they're a bit trickier to put together. And yeah, that's it for me. Like I said, if you want me to uh, answer any other questions you want to connect, my contact's down below, babybear4812 at gmail.com. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.